this time we have left Isagon and we are heading to Accra. And as you can see our sign right here. Tema Spintex Road, Airport West. And Airport West is where we were. By Jamra, Jamaican restaurant. And this one was major interchange where you can go this direction to Accra, you can go to Tema, and where we're going is just into the city. So yes, this is morning Accra traffic. And up there is the fancy high rise. Uh, brother, yeah, how much is one of those apartments up there? The apartments right here. Trust me. How much are the prices for some of them? Not saying that you know, but you may have an idea. Like I started seeing these like several years ago. The only difference issue now is your... Yeah, you gotta figure this step down a little bit. Hmm. So we think we're about a few thousand dollars a month. And who lives in these apartments? Yeah, yeah. Some, some just are about... Uh, Rich four thousand dollars a month. So rich Ghanaians like yourself live Oh, there. not Ghanaians. They are all foreigners. United, huh? Four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars a month. And this is the Accra yes. Mall over in the left. The list is about three and two thousand five hundred. So these are that is the back. top, 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 top. We're on this top. side, so if anybody ever wants to go, we just can expensive. take them there. And, and it's always when you can. Nice, quick, easy walking distance from the hotel. There's no room. People pay in advance, a year advance. Must be corporate housing. Yeah. Companies rent it for their representatives that are coming. For example, like the gold, uh, diamond, and all those industries. And they are partners who are coming from outside. Uh, they put them here to stay there. Oh my. Yeah. That's a very tall apartment building. Oh, well done, man. The most indisciplined people in the world is police. Yes, so family, you see our crowd traffic is crazy, so that's why we're we moving to the boroughs. Move far away into the suburbs, over by Winneba. But if you are going to be in a city, you got to know the time frame it's moving around. It's like living in one of the other crazy places like Los Angeles or Atlanta, where the traffic is a nightmare. But yes, family, this is literally our third day in Ghana. Day number four, but our third day in Ghana. Our last day in Accra. Right. And we're gonna head to Prom Prom Tema area. Or I should say Prom Prom Ningo area. We're gonna go to the African ancestral wall. Hello. Uh, country kitchen. Today, we're driving to but your country kitchen in country kitchen, country kitchen. Yes, that's us talking about our order for country kitchen lunch. Now when you roll on these journeys, whether you have ten people or they have forty people because I've had all different numbers of people travel with us. like us, we have a big group and expect the food to be you know, ready and you know, you're going to end up just waiting. So it's, it's the most important thing to do and we've been doing this since you know, the very beginning. You know, and the times when you just don't have it organized like that, it, it will hold you up. So 
that is you know, my uh, big time tip for anyone who want to organize anyone to bring groups of people or just you know, it's a family unit or anything you know, plan plot organize Stalling for traffic. Iman ka and country kitchen. Iman ka far and all you gotta do is text me their menu. Okay. Cause I can't eat the traffic in my own. Hello. I may go and find out. Yes, madam. Good morning. Throw the throw the time frame. Uh -huh. Watch out for lunch. I'm sure we can find out from the Indian this performing station. We need groups to go big deeper. Last week, we need groups to go. Now, we need groups to go. We are bringing. You see, we pay more menu. We watch out for the movie. We are left with a sign of WhatsApp. See, see, ah, then go for no. We watch out. We have no more choice. We have our own money. We are not ready. We just watch out. We send them a message. See, ah, go buy me the bar. A certain important areas. We will also go to George, um, uh, George Padmore. We will visit George Padmore Library, and then from George Padmore Library, we will continue to the B. E. Du Bois Centre for Pan Africanism. Uh, to be around three, four o'clock. Then from there, we we'll just drive to the hotel and get ready for the conference. So that's all it's going to be for the itinerary for today. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, Dr. Fabi Nkuma Mausoleum, that's where we are going first. Now, this area is known as Airport Residential Area. Airport Residential Area. Those who live here are the middle and then the top class. Not so top top, but the middle and a little bit up there. Yeah. There are some embassies also that have their Officers here, and some of them have their um, uh, staffs also living around this area. This airport residential area. From this place to the airport is about five minutes drive, if not less. Then you are at the airport. Accommodation in this area, the price is different from accommodation uh, 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 elsewhere. I don't know why. Whether it's because it's closer to the airport. It's the same as accommodation at East Legon. It's also different from accommodations uh, beyond this Legon. So this is airport residential area. Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum. We all know Kwame Nkrumah is the founder of this nation. And um, when he was voted into power, he was the leader of government business. And then later, he became the prime minister and then became the president. And 6th of March, 1957, when we had our independence. Somewhere along the line in 1966, uh, February, he was overthrown and then he went into exile. He died out of prostate cancer. When he traveled to Bucharest in Romania to treat himself, he died there. His body was sent to Guinea. When he was overthrown from Ghana, Guinea accepted him as a co-president in Guinea. Whilst he was alive, he tried to bring all Africans together to form African unity. He also did a three nation uh, coordinating 
one, Ghana, Dini, Mali. So even there were a lot of songs that were composed for Ghana, Guinea, and then Mali. So that the three of them will be one. If you are outsider and you attack Guinea, you have attacked Ghana. Ghana, Guinea, and Mali soldiers will jump on you. Yes. It's the same way all the three countries. And that is the whole idea of bringing the whole Africa under one umbrella. Knowing, knowing as African unity. Like the song that uh, the great man Bob Marley sang, Africa Unites. But the question is, currently, are we united? It's a big question. Are we united? As we drive along, I will show you a runabout or a circle that has been named after African unity. It was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah who created that uh, runabout. And the whole idea is that any African country that gets independence or gain independence, that country's flag is posted there. And that day is a holiday in Ghana. It doesn't matter whether you are, whether you are from the east, west, central, or whatever. It helped a lot of African countries to gain independence. So when he died and he was in Guinea, later the family had to go in and bring the body from Guinea. In Ghana, we don't bury in sheet caskets. We bury in wood caskets. When they brought the body, the body was in sheet caskets. So they remove it and then build a, a wood casket for him. Sheet, 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 uh, iron. They use Metal. iron. Uh, roofing, you see, we have roofing sheets. Yeah, lighters, lighters. Yes, yes. This is what we call it sheets. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. How do you call it? Uh, just uh, casket. Well, no, no, no. Most of our casket. Look, look at this. Yeah, most of our casket is made out of aluminum. Aluminum. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we use wooden caskets. So the body was brought to Ghana and then it was well embalmed. They lay him in state at his hometown in the western region, a town called Nkofu, for several years. I remember when we were kids, we went on excursion and they took us there and we saw him lying down there. It was there for years not deteriorating, nothing. It was well and bad. You know in the olden days wow. when someone uh, 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 loses life, they are able to embalm him for so many years. Yeah. Even hence we have the Egyptian mummy right. who can be kept for so many years. Mm -hmm. It's just spices and other things that they add to keep the body. Mm -hmm. But you ask yourself, when you keep the body for a long time, what are you going to do with the body? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So later, the government asked of the body to be buried in Accra. So they brought the body to Accra. It was buried uh, at a place, uh, we call it castle. And later, in somewhere in 1995, the government at, at that time decided that as the founder of the nation, he needs to be properly buried. So a cenotaph was built. It was designed by a Ghanaian called Dr. Don Atta. And the whole idea, looking at Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's profile, looking at Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's ideology. So he said, the cenotaph that was building, as he is designing to build, is Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's idea where he never got to his peak before he died. So it's like a tree that the top has been cut off. It also like looks like a machete that has been turned upside down. It's also traditional. If there is a war, what happened? People raises their machete. Every soldier, if there is a war, his weapon will never be down. He raises his 90 degrees, ready to fire. 
But if there is no war, they put their weapon down. It's the same thing traditionally. If there is no war, machete goes down. Every farmer, when he goes out to farm, he has his machete in his hands like this, ready to cast a tree or to clear some weeds. But when he goes home, he has retired. He put the machete down. He's resting. It's the same way when you go, you see the, it looks like a machete down there. So meaning Kwame Nkrumah is resting. And he was buried there. Now the place that Kwame Nkrumah was buried, it is the same place when we had independence. Kwame Nkrumah pronounced the independence of this nation there. Formerly we were Gold Coast, then we became Ghana. On the 5th of March, midnight of 5th of March to 6th of March, that's what it did. The um, uh, uh, things that he used and where he stood, his statue is there right now that when we go, we will see. The podium that he stood on to pronounce Ghana's independence is still there. And it's still there, we will see when we go. It's a monument, yeah. This big statue has been erected there, pointing this way. Kwame Nkrumah formed a political party known as CPP, Convention People's Party. And their motto is, forward ever, backwards never. We should go forward. So his finger that he has pointed, meaning we are moving forward. And we are supposed to move forward. Everyone is supposed to move forward. Yeah. There is no retrogression. We need to move forward. When he died, they buried him there. We will see the grave. Then, according to his children, Kwame Nkrumah's idea is for us to intermarry the whole Africans, wherever you are, you can marry from another country because we are all one. That is why when you come to Ghana, we have 75 ethnic groups that speak 46 languages and dialects. We intermarry. I know some Christians who have married Muslims. I know some Muslims who have married Christians. I know some Christians who have married African traditionalists. I know some uh, Muslims who have married African traditionalists. We live together. Ghana have a certain unique features that you can never find it anywhere in the world. You go to a community, you will see a church here and a mosque here. <laughs> there is no uh, uh, violence, no strife, nothing among them. We all live peacefully. Currently, our Muslim brothers and sisters celebrated their individual uh, festival, one of the biggest festivals on their calendar. They have Idifito and Idiada. Idifito festival. It's a month of uh, sacrifice. And they go through one month of fasting. At the end of it, they break the fast, and when they break the fast, they have party. Not really enjoyment, but you know, they sit down to thank God for God accepting their sacrifice. As a result of that, that day they invite all the communities to come and share whatever they have with them. They invite the Christians, they invite the African traditionalists. And then we all share. Speak of Mass, Mass is when here. You, you, uh, 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 Christians have Christmas and New Year, you also invite them, share with them, so we live peacefully. This can never be done in Nigeria. This can never be done in Turkey. This can never be done in a whole lot of places in the world. No way. But when you come to Ghana, I can walk in any Muslim community. Nobody, they don't care. You are, we are one. So, no. There you go. You can walk in any Christian community. We are all there. There is no community in Ghana that there are no Muslims or there are no Christians. A little bit ahead of us, I will show you. It's a Muslim endemic area. 
But there are Christians there, there are churches there. <laughs> so the church is in the mosque? Yes! <laughs> yeah, I, was yeah. say, I was saying the church is inside Very the mosque. Very soon you're going to see one of the beautiful mosques that was built by Turkey government for uh, uh, Muslims here in Ghana. Please allow me to pick this call in uh, connection yes, with our lunch. Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, please, I'll call you again. I will, I'm going to give it to them so that uh, they will choose whatever they want to eat. And then uh, I'll communicate to you so that you get it prepared by 12 o'clock. We'll be there to eat. Okay. Thank you, dear. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. Perfect. So, can we wait for traffic to proceed? So perfect, God has texted to me on WhatsApp and I'll work it out and um, we'll write everybody order down and submit it. And that's us being proactive family. We gotta put them orders in. I called my one house is over here in the left, you know. I, th I thought at one point that this may have been um going now the building uh, that's white building or uh, on your left we call it gold house it belongs to the uh, the gold company here in Ghana called Anglo Gold and this is their office in Accra formerly I take people there for a tour because there was a huge gold there that you can see you just go there and it's just there that you can you know I take people there and this is a Gold that people touches and do this and that, and, but uh, currently do, that thing has been moved from there. So the nobody, been so nobody it's a, goes it's there anymore. Like, it's like a huge one, like this. it's a rock, gold rock, and then you can also see the gold dust. Yeah, but now those things are no more. So, so people don't go there no more. Well, no, no way. The, the, what what attracts us has been taken away, so there's no more attraction. Family. And this traffic is serious business. Soon you're gonna need a helicopter to get around. Yeah, so maybe it's uh, 9 30 something in the morning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we're moving now, we've been posing for a while. Oh. So we're taking a shortcut today, or is it a long cut? This place is even better than the way we were. Yeah, how long has Mars been built? This thing? Yeah, so coming up is the is most that I'm talking about. Uh, I let it to officially be open, I think, next month or so. Oh wow, so it's been, yeah. it's been beautiful. Also, oh, this, this has been, been, this was in the process of building for the last few years. I remember seeing the foundation of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's coming to light. Uh huh. What? All of it. Is this the one? Yeah. Beautiful one. Yeah. This is going to be the headquarters of uh, uh, all the mosques in Accra. What's the name? Oh, this place is called uh, uh, Nima. Yeah. Now. Yes, yeah. Okay. This is your area, right? This is your, your turf, right, Nima? I've sent it to. I've sent it to you. So, what do we have in the background here? Oh, this is a. Uh, on the. On the right is Muslim endemic area. We have Nima. So mean like we have two a, different places so called Nima like and then Mam will be ahead of us. So mean like hood? Like 
Like ghetto hood? Yeah, like a ghetto. Oh, yes, right. sure. He said a very nice, the word he used. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're a nigga, then you know, we, we walk there every day. Right, so tell me, yeah. Now, look at the type of building on the left, and then look at the type of building on the right. As you drive along. So the left is developed and the right is undeveloped? Thank you. The left is well developed. There are streets and everything in there, nice houses. By the right, no. When the British were here, some of them were living on the left side. So they developed that area. And on the right side, the indigenous, that one, no, they didn't develop that place. A saying, a proverb that says that, I will directly translate it, that one person's hand cannot cover the face of God. One person's hand, your hand alone cannot cover God's face. Right. Meaning that you need someone's hand to support you. Right. Yeah. The government is doing what it can, and we need your assistance to uh, 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 fast track the development of this nation. For example, if you can and live here, or you stay here, definitely where you are, you like to take as care of a certain things in that area or in that community. There's development, and we, we, we are moving forward. Yes. It's not going to be like ordinary. Sure. As you can, you might be having some business. You employ people. Those people would have been sitting down doing nothing. But your presence here has given them job. Not only they themselves, but even their families. If a woman with a husband and a wife, a man has a wife and children, you're giving them something. But I think, I think my position is more in terms of what the government is doing. The government's responsibility to the people. Yeah. And the people's responsibility to the government. Yeah. So my position is. Will, is Ghana ready to support that movement towards the people? Because it should be so. It should be services available for people to strengthen the infrastructure, which strengthens the country. Yeah. Yes. The government is ever ready. The government is ever ready. I can show them how but, to do it. But but that's why I said but. Yeah. You know when someone says the person is good, but <laughs> that means there is. Invented comments. Mm -hmm. He's doing well, but yeah, but um, I understand. Uh, the the he's supposed to do more than what he is doing currently. But okay, the priorities. The, yeah, it has to be. There are some things. Does it? There are some things that the cities near the cities near cannot do anything unless the government one construction of a road. Is uh, 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 the responsibility of uh, uh, the government in power? Right. Yeah. Like uh, 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 healthcare, mm -hmm. the same thing. Uh, like schools, mm -hmm. that is, it lies in the doorsteps of the government. Other people cannot do anything about it. So the only thing that we can do is that uh, we, can we, we, we have to fire them to do more. When I say fire them, we use the media to tell them, hey, this and this and this, not social media. No, no social media, sometimes I don't trust it. <laughs> yeah, they, can, they can be biased. Yeah. But we use the media, the journalists, the papers, the radio, the television to let them know that, hey, you're supposed to run 100 meters, but you are running uh, 1,600 meters, you are not going fast, so you need to move fast. There is a proverb that says that if someone is cutting a line, doesn't know that the back is crooked, 
unless you tell, hey, your back is crooked, straighten it, because we are behind you. Interesting. Uh -huh. So that is that is what. Uh, uh, currently, there is a group that wanted to demonstrate because um, things are getting tougher and tougher. Honestly, tougher and harder and harder. In regards to. Okay. In regards to food. In regards to uh, almost everything. When I say getting harder and harder, we were buying petroleum, mm -hmm. a gallon of petroleum at uh, 20 cities. Currently, it's about almost 30 cities. Uh, within, the spacement, within the spacement of uh, five months, the government have increased petroleum. Uh, Did it increase five the pay wage? Times. The, no. Wow. You can't increase uh -huh. one without the other. With the wages, there is a committee called Tripartite Committee. And that one, they said they are now certain to think about how much they should pay a, a Ghanaian worker. And the minimum wage, how much it will go. Yes. So you can just imagine, it's a slow pace on the side of the government. Okay. Uh -huh. But see, but see, yes. but see, not to cut you off, but see, you have to look at, the, you have to always consider the source. So what is the source? Why is it that, you know, we're looking at 2021. Why would Ghana, and it's not just Ghana, but why would Ghana almost still be operating like um, the British are still in control? You are right. Maybe the British are still in control. Maybe they are. So the British? Ghana got their freedom for real. Yes. Yes. Thank you. What is freedom if, you, if you're not free? Thank you. <laughs> it's not like, uh, it's not like living in America. Uh. <laughs> I don't think you were at the table. It's young that with us uh, in our yes. our home. No. Okay. You said that in Atlanta there was a, an agreement made with the rights. He said he just wanted to think that it was emotional. A thing of them regretting what they did, it was not. He said there was an agreement. Blacks would be the political face of Atlanta, and whites would be the economic face. Hey. So, and politics without the what? Okay. Okay. Can you can you hold on? Can you hold fire? We have something that I need to tell you, an important place. So they never really. Now, this is the area that I'm talking of. Formerly, it was called Redemption Circle because you have been redeemed from the hands of the British or colonial rule. Um, then right now, it is called AU, African Unity Square. Now, the cenotaph is the one over there. Oh. That is where Dr. Kwame Brown has been hosting the flag when okay. he gained independence. Oh. I will pass it again and I will talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So, this is the AU Square, AU Runabout, and then the cenotaph okay. where Kwame Brown has been hosting so, his flag. So I yeah. hear you say there's a lot of work that needs to be done. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes. That's the word. Um, Coming up, uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, little by little. Coming up is the uh, World Trade Center in Ghana. And this World Trade Center is for West African countries. All West African countries come here to do, even let me say, the whole Africa. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's the building on our right. That's the building on our right. Yeah, that's the World Trade Center. Like New York and Aha. And then, that's better as well. We have our Ghana Stock Exchange. Stock Exchange is here. And then just after that, just after that, take a look on your left, the building coming up over there is the National Theater. National Theater was built in 1991. And the government used Chinese prisoners to build this. It was an agreement between Ghana and China and the prisoners. So um, Chinese prisoners came and then they built this. But the money and everything is from Ghana. Yes. And then uh, on your right hand side is a, a five star hotel, Moving Peak. Moving Peak Hotel. We are in the center of the city. 
Open Creek, and then that is a Cross City Hotel, right? Just after Moving Peak, we have a Novotel. Novotel is a chain of hotels all around the world. I mean, it's not a Novotel anymore, it's a Cross City Hotel. Yes, now this part of their hotel has been sold out to uh, uh, the Ghana government and then some individuals. So now it's known as Accra City Hotel. Formerly it was known as Novotel. That was the first hotel I stayed in. Oh, when okay. I came Novotel. Novotel. Years ago. Oh, yeah, Novotel. wow. It's the only bad nice. thing about it is that you're in the city, city. Uh, like in, where we are, we're in our neighborhood. Uh, where yeah. We can move around and do certain it's things. Difference. Because when I, by the time you get tonight, it looks a little uh, awkward around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a very nice place. Uh, yeah, Novotel. Uh, sure. Yeah. I'm sure inside is full of luxury. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Alright, Kwabna, how far we away from Nkuma? We are in the city centre now. And on the right is one of the uh, schools that was built by Dr. Kwame Nkuma in 1961. Let's go. For Kimbo. Yes. And then on the left is the Metropolitan Authority's office. The Metropolitan Authority. This is a, Accra is a cosmopolitan area. So this is the Metropolitan Office on the left. Okay. This is a office. Metro bus. Is, yeah, Metro bus is the bus that, you know, runs through the city. Okay. Yeah, for a short distance. We have a long distance and then we have a short distance vehicle. Yeah. And then, just on your left hand side, uh, where this bus is going, it also applies within the city. But over there, we have two types of vehicles. One is the one that applies long journey, like from here to Kumasi, which is about five hours, six hours, eight hours, 10 hours, or even 14 hours, going to the north. No, to the north, yeah. And then we have another side that applies within the metropolis. That is about 10 kilometers, eight kilometers, 12 kilometers, and others, yeah. So, what we get over here. so as a city center, a lot of people troop all the way from the villages and towns come here, buy things in bulk, and then they go and sell. But I'll call in your in your and I'll the left one. We wait. How we get you? Okay. Uh, I still want to know. See, EFS and the Ikasa. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, man, this is like an old stadium. Oh, yeah. Is this an old stadium? No, this is a hockey pitch, national oh, hockey pitch. Where we they have the astroturf. Oh yeah. Yeah, is on on this place. Okay. Oh. Cool here and here go. That's what's up, family. We are almost at Dr. Kwame Kumas Mausoleum. Commission on Human Rights. Yes, Commission on Human Rights. The family, all the court houses, all that good stuff is in this area. So it, it seems like that's one of the, one of those things where everything is crammed into one small geographical area, and then all the traffic just comes. Yeah. 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 See, if you always do what you always did, you always gonna get what you always got. That's my philosophy. Yes, so family, we are we so almost here, so we'll give you some wonderful footage. Of course, you have to understand. At uh, Kwame Nkrumah uh, Memorial. First, you have to know politics uh, and how. What's that? Speed, the journey continues. We have a wonderful yeah, time. Yeah, you can't can always be passive. You know, I'm not talking about aggressive 